What's up guys, it's MCJ, Matt Collins Jones here, back with another video, and this time we are talking about Power Virtual Agents, or chatbots, from Microsoft. Um, Microsoft have just released a brand new feature, currently in preview, called Conversational Boost, or Boost Conversations. And what this does is this uses a GPT framework, uh, an AI model, to collect data from websites, pull that back in real time, and present that to someone in a chatbot. You may have noticed all the hype recently about ChatGPT3 and all of the uh, all the investment that Microsoft are making with uh, AI and things like ChatGPT3. Um, so this is one of their first steps into it. They just released a big announcement that said they're basically putting loads of different AIs in, in loads of pieces of dynamics and, and Power Platform technology. And this is one of those first steps. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a look at how this works and how you can use this in your environment. So I'm in my Power Virtual Agents um, setup uh, environment here, and I've got two options. I've got Build for Production and Try the Unified Canvas Preview. We're gonna choose the Try Unified Canvas Preview uh, because this is where this is currently available. If my screen wants to click, ah, here we go. Took me a while. Um, right, we need a, a name for my bot, so we'll call this the, uh, it's Wednesday, we'll call this the Wednesday bot. bot. Uh, it's locked to English at the moment because creating a chatbot in preview is currently only available in English, it's fine. And we have this bit here that says boost your conversations with GPT preview. Uh, and there's some links here to learn more about it. So what we need to do is we need to put in a website. So I'll put in my blog, www.d365geek.co.uk. And then it allows us to create. Okay. After a few minutes of the bot provisioning itself and creating everything, we then land on the test bot screen and we have all these preview um, boxes over here. And this is just a regular chat bot. It comes in with a lot of the default topics that we have already, like the hello, goodbye, and the sample topics and things. So I could say something like, hello, and it says, hello, how can I help you today? Um, and it just comes with those, those out of the box, um, those out of the box to topics that we, we are used to. But because we've linked this to my website, what it will do is it will actually go off to my website if I asked it a question that is not triggered by any of these triggering topics, and it will try and pull back that information and surface that to me. So I could say something like, uh, tell me about the power chat form. And then it's gonna take a second or two to go off and look at the website and pull some information back. And then here we go. It says, the Power Chat form is a podcast hosted by d365geek.co.uk. Here are some of the episodes. And it links me to episodes four, episodes five, and episodes one. I really need to restart my podcast uh, at some point. So this is a um, this is all, all surfaced from, uh, from my website. It, it's gone off to my website in real time and it's pulled back the information. So one of the, one of the restraints at the moment of GPT-3 uh, when you're asking questions is that the data set that you can look to is a couple of years old. This actually looks in real time. This looks at my website as it is right now and pulls back some information and it surfaces what it thinks um, would be relevant to this conversation. So I don't have anything in here in a custom topic or in a system topics that, that talks about the Power Chat form at all. Um, this is just this is just gone off and said, right, okay, I can't find anything. I'm gonna go off to this website and I'm gonna pull some information back. And we do actually get warned as well, so like you can say, this is surfaced by Azure Open AI. So we know that we know that the information has come from the Azure Open AI uh, aspect of Power Virtual Agents and not via a topic. So we know that. So and we'll we'll let the user know that as well. So that's another question. Um, <coughs> um, Word, uh, how do I use ALM on Word templates? Another great topic that I love in my blog. We'll tell it that. And then and then straight away it comes back, says you can use Power Automate Word templates of ALM by following the steps outlined by this post. And it gives me a link to this post and I can click on this link and it'll open up my website and I can, I can see that it's, it's the right article and I can see everything else. So this is this is really powerful because previously what you could do is you could um, create a suggested topic. So you could point it at a website, um, the bot would go off and it would look 
for a structure of that website or you could pass it like a, an FAQ page or a, a document with some questions and answers and it would try and figure out what was the best thing uh, and, and pull the, the, these things back. But then it's a point in time issue where you do it once uh, if the FAQ gets updated later on, you have to go back and redo it. What this does is this will take everything in real time and we'll pull it back and try and present it to someone. <coughs> so we've, we've set this up to my website. If I go to settings and the AI capabilities, we can see there's some other stuff here. So there is actually a, uh, a little, um, there was a little pop-up here about internal documents port, something coming soon. Once you use internal documents to power your bot, apply for early access. So that might be another video that we, we look at in the, in the future. But we've got a couple of settings here. So we've got boost conversations and we've got um, bot content moderation. So we'll talk about the bot content moderation first. And it says, choose a level of content moderation you'd like to include in boosting uh, conversational coverage. So again, it's related to this AI capability. A high level of moderation means your bot answers will be more relevant. A lower level means that the bot will generate more answers. So we have high, medium, and low. And it's basically saying, right, okay, work out what you think the best thing is. If, if that's the best thing, then, then give people that answer. If you, if you are unsure about it, if you're not, if the, the percentage or whatever the, the threshold is, isn't there, just don't give an answer or, or it, the answer might be less relevant. So, um, so we have different options. High is the default one. And we also have this button for boost conversations and we can put in um, a website here. And it, it does give you some information about um, information. So it says don't include query strings and, and things like that. So it's all good. Now I've done this for my website. Um, now what if I want to choose someone else's website? So a friend of mine, Joe Griffin, CRM chap, got a great blog. Let's take his URL here. And what we will do is we will paste this into here and do that. Uh, and we'll probably need to put uh, www dot the start. <clears throat> and what we'll do is it'll hit save. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave this to run in real time and we can see how quickly it takes. And see, there we go, straight away. Within 10 seconds, your bot will try out real time responses when needed. You won't be able to publish a bot with features enabled. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> but immediately what we'll see is that the bot has refreshed so all our previous conversations have gone. So there is a button here to, to reset the bot if you get stuck in a loop or if there's any issues. And we can start typing something in. So if I type in um, um, study guides for PL600, oops, doesn't know, PL-600, try typing this in again, PL-600. Oh, so this is something to be aware of because it is currently in preview that sometimes it can take a little while to um, go off and reset the, the nodes where it's actually pulling the data from. So if you get stuck like this, just reset it a few times um, and just wait a little bit of time. Okay, that was actually my fault. Um, I put www dot in, in front of the CRM chat thing and it didn't need it. So as soon as I remove that, I can now uh, type in here. So uh, study guide guide for PL 600 A exam. Now it's about to take a second. And then I start to come back and say, here's some useful resources for studying the PL 600 exams. There's like three different resources here with all links to Joe's website. So it's, it's really that quick. Um, it's really that you can um, you can generate these things and have it work in real time really, really quickly, which is going to speed up the production and, and getting your bot from, from um, design to market. So it's really useful. It's really handy to be able to, to just point something at a website and say, hey, use this in real time. So when you're marketing, update the FAQ page, if when um, there's a new product that's available in the sales page, you can use a chatbot and it will automatically know the information from there and automatically go and pull it from there. <coughs> so that's really powerful. Now I did mention that sometimes it can get a little stuck in a loop and, and you may need to reset it. It's one of the known things of using this at the moment. The other thing to be aware of, um, as we kind of did um, put in the the website, d365geek.co.uk, and hit save, that 
when uh, when you see this green bar at the top, it says you won't be able to publish your bot with this feature enabled. So this is a brand new feature. This is something that Microsoft are working on to try and get our feedback, but they do not want it in production at the moment, and they do not want it um, to be to be used on external websites and things like that at the moment. Because as as you may have seen, there are some people trying to trick GPT three and, and all these other things. So. Microsoft are working really hard on this feature and they don't want it in production just yet, but they're really excited about getting these things into people's hands, which is why we have this preview right now. So this is a preview you can use. Uh, it's still rolling out across the tenants. I'm in a US tenant at the moment, which is why I can have access to it. I still don't have it in my UK tenant at the moment, but if you do get access to it, have a play around with it, stick it in some websites and let me know what you think. This is a really cool feature. This is really going to um, speed up that bot development um, that we've got uh, here. So it, it's going to really help companies get those bots out to, into people's hands much, much quicker uh, and, and rest assured that it's going to be able to constantly update the information and you don't have to worry about someone constantly going back and re-updating the bot and adding more to it over time. So let me know what you think. Do you like this feature? Do you not like this feature? Uh, what are you, what is your first impressions of it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like it and share it with a friend, that'd be great. If you've not already, hit a subscribe button, stay up to date with all my latest videos, and I'll see you next time.